Yudtet, paragraph Zayin. Torah Yudtet, paragraph Zayin. So Rabbeinu is saying to us, Umishi Yachol, and the person that can, Lehit Orer Nit, a person that can wake up the um, sparks, the sparks, sparks the of light, that sparks of letters, light of letters that are in everything. Shebechol maase bereshit, sheyesh bechol davar, that it is in every action of the creation, in every things of this world. As I, so then, if a person can wake up those letters, how the person gonna wake up those letters? First of all, the person have to wake himself up, to understand that there is letters. He needs to remember that Borei Olam, he created this world with speeches, with Diburim. Borei Olam said, Borei Olam said, Yehi Or, but Yehi Or. So Borei Olam said two words, Yehi and Or, and by that he created the reality of light. So actually light contains those letters and if there is more words that bond into that subject, so also like Tchelet or like, um, I don't know what, more words that are connected, all of those um, letters together created the reality of light. And white and fast and I don't know what, maher, velavan, and all of those, or shakuf, that it's clear, all of those letters created the creation of the reality that calls light. So, tomato, table, wall, kir, and avanim, and um, standing, omed, and all of those words, HaKadosh Baruch Hu used them in the creation to create that reality. So first of all, we need to wake up those letters. How are we going to wake up? The first thing is to believe. To believe that there is letters in everything that there is in the in creation, in reality. Everything, what are we eating? We're eating letters. What are we breathing? We're breathing letters. What are we drinking? We're drinking letters. This is the first thing that the person have to have, and this is also our level of that thing. How are we gonna wake up those things? We're gonna understand that it's a reality. If now you believe in it, so it's gonna happen. It's gonna wake up. And then we're gonna feel it more and more and more. Rabenu told a story that I think it was not allowed to reveal. I don't know all of the details about that story, so even if I'm going to reveal it, it's not going to be revealed. But Rabbeinu said, it calls the story about the bread, Maaseh Me'alechem. And Rabbeinu told that story that something happened to him once, that he wanted to say Hamotzi on piece of bread, and when he made Netilat Yadayim, he came to the table, and he saw that on his plate, there is only letters and no bread over there anymore. He reached that high level that he saw the letters and he didn't know what to do. If he allowed to make a mozi now on those letters, or that he, that bracha of netilat yadayim was a bracha lebatala, what he gonna do now? And then he remembered that I think it was his grandfather of Nachman Mehor uh, Danke that he told that story that once he was in a different, in a, in a, in a place, in, in, that there, maybe in, a, in a Istanbul or somewhere like that, a place that there was Goim over there, and I think it was in his journey to Eretz Israel or something like that, and when he got there, he needed to eat, and he made Netilat Yadayim, and they, they brought to him a, a bread, a, 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 chala, a bread, and he understood that that piece of bread, it's pat akum. It was bread that made by a goyim. And over there, they were not so careful in that, but he was, and he had a doubt if he allowed to eat it or not. And then he got in his thoughts, Borah Olam gave him to see, to think about that verse, 
ואת האהובים ציוויתי לכלכליך, I commanded the ravens to give you food, so because that he remembered that verse, he understood that his thoughts were telling him, that Borei Olam is signing him that he is allowed to eat that bird, even that the ravens created that chala, even that those goyim created that chala, that pat akum, but Borei Olam commanded them to make that chala, so that chala is important. So this is Rabenu learned two things about that. Rabenu learned how much the thoughts of the person are important, how much it's important to, to see, to observe what Borei Olam is putting in your thoughts, what is Borei Olam is sending into your mind. You're walking in the street and you're thinking about something, it's not an empty thing. It's a very important thing. And it's connected to all of your reality, to all of the creation. And then you need to try to, we need to try to, to, to see the signs, because Borolam, all of the time, this is so to speak his nature. This is so to speak the nature of Borolam, that he's talking. All of the time he's talking, he's sending to us signs and clues and hints how to wake up, how to fix ourselves, how to do tshuva and a lot of times he's using our thoughts and we need to believe that even our thoughts, it's not our thoughts it's not our thoughts, it's the thoughts that Borei Olam is putting into your mind and now you need to deal with it or to be happy with it, or to make it, or to ignore it, or to fight against it or to do tshuva on those bad thoughts that we have and this is something that Borei Olam is sending a person that have bad thoughts now for an example instead of falling down because of that he needs to understand Borei Olam is waking me up through those bad thoughts to do tshuva on those subjects on those matters that I'm thinking bad thoughts about them it's not that look at my reality my, my matzav, my condition it's, uh, it's horrible, I have all of the time bad thoughts, all of the time bad hirurim, all of the time thinking about bad things. No, no, stop chasing after yourself. It's wrong. It's not the purpose. The purpose is that you're going to wake up to realize what is the message. There is a message. There is something that you need to do tshuva on. And you're not waking up through the actions that you have in your life to do tshuva. So Borolam is putting his speaker inside your box and then it's yelling and yelling and yelling and you need to wake up wake up from that to do tshuva on that when you're going to do tshuva on that it's going to stop one of the avrachim asked the rab shalom he said rab please every time that you're talking in the shiurim you're telling us to close our eyes but when i'm closing my eyes the pictures that i see it's more horrible than the thing that i can see with my eyes open what i'm going to do so rab shalom told him if you're going to be used to if you're going to Titragel, used to. If you're going to use to go with your eyes closed, after a while, those bad thoughts are going to disappear. It's going to take time. In the beginning, in the beginning it's going to be a huge fight. But if you're going to go with that shita of thinking only good thoughts, trying to separate yourself from the bad thoughts that you used to think, like today I told one of the friends here in the yeshiva, he asked me about Shmirat and I, I told him the reason that we're closing our eyes, it's not because this is how we're fighting our Yetzirah. No, this is how we're helping ourselves to get used to be relaxed, to get used to go as normal people that are not looking like drunk people on every picture that there is in the streets, everything that is have two legs, we have to check who is it and where he's going to and what he's doing and what he's carrying. It's crazy. It's crazy that we're like that all of the time checking. We're not CNN. We're not. We're not. If so, there is someone from the CNN here. Yeah. So this is so this is this is our job. And this is one thing that Rabenu learned from that Masemi Lechem, that the thoughts of the people are very important. The second thing that he had, that he re because that he remembered that situation, he understood that he allowed to eat. And actually he made Birkat Hamotzi on those letters. And he ate those letters. This was the Rabenu's level, Baruch Hashem. We're happy that we have him, and we're happy that we don't have his uh, bag on our shoulders also. Rabbeinu signed to Borei Olam Arvut. How do you say Arvut? Guarantee. Guarantee. 
He told Bala Olam, I'm signing guarantee that I'm going to help all of the world to do Tshuva Shlema. That all of the world going to do Tshuva Shlema, it's Rabbi Nachman Mibreser's responsibility. He said that. It's not ours. So now, if you see that for you it's hard to do Tshuva, it's only because that you imagine that it's your job to do Tshuva. It's not your job to do Tshuva. It's Rabbi Nachman Mibreslev's job to give you the privilege to do Tshuva. So what is your job? To believe. Your job is to count on him, is to count on the Tzadikim. Try to do Tshuva on something. Rabbeinu said you cannot do Tshuva even on one small thing that you've done wrong. If you made an Avera, you cannot do Tshuva. How are you going to confess? Even your confession not going to be with a real heart. Your heart is still running, chasing after those desires, like we learned. How are you going to do tshuva? How are you going to confess? Someone wants to confess on his desire for food. And if you're going to see a steak now, you won't have that desire anymore. This is it. You cannot confess. What are you going to confess? Bro Lam, I'm sorry that I was eating so late without making the tilat yadayim, without washing myself first, without this, without that, without making the right bracha. I was not thinking, what are you going to do now if you're going to get the same steak? The same. So how you confess? You cannot confess. Even your confession, you need to have siyata dishmaya that it's going to rise. Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu cannot stand the person that he's lying. Now you're lying in your confession. You're lying to Borei Olam. Saying, Borei Olam, I don't want to see no women. Who don't want to see no women? Oh, no, are you joking? You're lying. You want to see women. Just you have problem with it. With it. You're suffering because of that. So you don't want to suffer. It's also a lie. You love to suffer. You love that suffering, you love that sadness, you love to lie in bed, you love to cover your head until you're all alone, everyone are wrong, you're saying to yourself, Lashon around, everyone, everyone is wrong. You love that, you love, you have yet, yet, what can you do? Confess on that, you can confess on that. So all of our tshuva is to put all of the weight of our tshuva on the tzaddikim. Rav Shalom said, the biggest Yetzirah of them all is when a person wants to be a tzaddik himself. This is wrong. Don't be a tzaddik. Believe that there is a tzaddik. There is Moshe Rabbeinu. We don't need to replace him. This is his job to be the tzaddik. We cannot stand in his tests. The test of the tzaddik of this generation, we don't want it. No one of you, no one of... I don't want it also. No one wants it. It's too risky. It's too dangerous. The tzaddikim are suffering. The Rav Shalom said that tzaddikim in this generation are suffering very, very much. You see how many tzaddikim are rising to make up around all of our avonot. This is what's going on in this generation. The tzaddikim are, are, are suffering. They're chas shalom. They're dying in chas shalom. They have a lot of weaknesses and illness and, and problems in their life and very hard situations like we saw, like we can see. So it's not our job to be a tzaddik. Our job is to lie on the tzaddik, to count on the tzaddik. There is a story about, Rabbi, I think it was Rabbi Yoel Misatmer, that we were talking about that once that he was remembering, he remembered all of his Gilgulim. And he said all of his uh, um, form life, former life. Life. Form life. And he said that in the generation of Moshe Rabbeinu and Korach, in that, he was not holding a hand, he was living in that generation. It's Ismach Moshe. It was the, all right, wonderful. It's, it's, Baruch Hashem. Yeah. Ismach Moshe. It's Ismach Moshe, not Rabbi Yoel, not the Yoel Moshe. It was the Ismach Mo, uh, uh, Moshe. And he said that he remembered all of his Gilgulim, and in his, that life, for, life Time when he was in the generation of Moshe Rabbeinu, he was not holding a side in the Machloket. He was not against Moshe Rabbeinu. So, who was it? His father? Someone? Not asked him? What? It's not against Korach. He was not against... He, he was not against Moshe Rabbeinu. He was not holding... He was natural. And someone asked him, this is it, you were not supporting Moshe? So he said, in that generation, not to contradict Moshe, not to fight against Moshe, it was a very high level. Even not to fight on him. There was a story about the Baal Shem Tov, that one time a Baal Shem Tov was walking in the street, and there was a huge machloket about the Baal Shem Tov. All of the people were fighting against him. It was huge, it was horrible. <coughs> Mamash, they, they allowed, his blood was, was allowed to kill him. Mamash, to kill him. Chas shalom. And one time there was a woman that wanted to throw a stone about the Baal Shem Tov. 
and she saw when Abal Shem Tov was walking, she saw a huge rock, and she tried to pull that rock and to lift it and to throw it about Abal Shem Tov, and she couldn't. And she said, Bore Olam, please, that it's going to be considered like I throw that stone on Abal Shem Tov, because I cannot. But please, accept that stone like that I was throwing it on him. And he said, Abal Shem Tov said, that that woman gave a lot of pleasure to Bore Olam. Borolam enjoyed that because she's got a Yetzer Ara. It's a Yetzer Ara, but her will was good. The will can be good even if a person wants to do things that are wrong. We can understand in those generations when people have so many confusions, so many temptations, people can want really with their good will to, to want to do sins, to do avera, to make mistakes. And really their heart is full with passion to that avera, and you cannot con uh, convince them to realize that they are wrong. And you can only understand them. You can only understand that they have that yetzerara, that they have topics, that they have issues, that they have lackings, that they have traumas, that they have situations. And if we're not there for them, we cannot love them. You cannot judge a person until you're over there. And this attitude has to be also for us when we're looking at ourselves. You have to understand yourself. Your job is not to be a tzaddik. Your job is to be who that you are. With your yetzer to serve Bore Olam. With your lacking, to serve Hashem Midbarach. To believe in the tzaddikim. Even that you have contradictions in your mind and you have confusions and you have problems, they're coming from somewhere. They're coming from your childhood. They're coming from your education, from your old yeshiva, from your old um, conversations, from YouTubes. I don't know what they're growing from somewhere, and this is your con condition. And on that condition, you have to work. And how are you going to work about it? Slowly, slowly, step by step, ask help from Bore Olam, ask help from the tzaddikim, look for the advice, for the real advice in the books, between the friends, in your conversations. You cannot tear out your yetzara from yourself. Rabenu said, if I'm going to take out your yetzara from you, you're going to bleed until you're going to die. We are so connected to our Yetzirah that we cannot cut our relationship with Yetzirah in one day. This is why Bore Olam is saying to us that the war that he's got against Amalek is for generations. What? Bore Olam, you cannot erase that st st stupid nation in one second? It's going to happen in one second if Bore Olam is going to decide. But Bore Olam knows that Amalek is the doubts that we have inside of us, the Tietzerara that we have inside of us. And if we're going to kill that nation, we all going to die, Chas Shalom. We cannot stand without that nation. We love that nation. Even that that nation is the nation that murdered, murdered us, and it's the nation that is killing us still and ruining us. We love them. What we, we can, we're sick. We're sick. This is us. We have problems. We have issues. We have traumas. We're sick. We're confused. And now we need to serve Hashem Barach with those lackings. And when a person is serving Hashem Barach with his lackings, it's a higher level than a person that is serving Hashem Barach when he's a tzaddik. Because for a tzaddik, like we learned a lot of times, a tzaddik that is serving Hashem Barach, it's simple. If you have a good nature and you're calm and you're relaxed and you're wise and you're serving Hashem Barach, there is no chidush in it. But if you're crazy, and you have desire to run to the sea every time that you see the sun rising, and you're running to the Beit Midrash even though that your legs are trying to pull you to the sea and to other places. So this is strong. This is person that is increasing all of his powers against the Yetzirah and, and, and uh, conquer the Yetzirah. This is someone that is conquered that war, the war, Milchemet HaYetzirah, the war against the Yetzirah. A person that got a present from Borei Olam that he doesn't have Yetzirah and he's serving Hashem Yitbarach like the angels, there is no Chidush in it. They don't have no gain in the world to come. The gain is according to the effort and how deep you are in the depths, you're going to have to have more effort to climb out from there, to rise to the light. So you have only a bigger present, a bigger potential, a bigger option to get gain in the world to come. That your success is going to be more important in the world to come. That Borei Olam is going to consider your effort as something huge when you are like that you are. 
This is why we need to be happy, totally happy, 100% happy with our lackings. And you're saying, but look, I'm not waking up to Shachrit, I'm not going to daven in a minyan. I don't remember when I was davening in a minyan. Maybe seven years ago, something like that. I remember once or twice I was in a shtibel, I didn't have no choice, and I was davening in a minyan. Wonderful. Who said that you're not making Hashem Barak happy with that Shachrit? Your lame Shachrit. Who said that Boreh Olam is not happy? You see that Boreh Olam is letting you daven that lame Shachrit even day after and also tomorrow and day after tomorrow also every day he is letting you why he is letting you dive in that lame shachrit because you enjoy your shachrit you are judging yourself but you don't know who you are you don't know yourself you don't know your yetzer hara Borei Olam that he knows everything he knows exactly why you are diving like that and he's not judging you in the way that you are judging yourself like I told you that Rabbi Chaim Vital the student of Ariya Kadosh, he told, he told his, his teacher, his rabbi, Ariya Kadosh, he told him, look, I'm not a tzaddik like you're saying, because Ariya Kadosh was telling him always that he is the one that's been chosen, that he is his student. It was his Hilula in Lamed Ben Isan yesterday in the Rosh Chodesh Yar. It was the Hilula of Rabbi Chaim Vital. And Rabbi Chaim Vital told Ariya Kadosh, I'm not qualified to be your student, to be your main student. There is such a huge tzaddikim, Rabbi Yosef Karo, Arab El Kabetz, huge tzaddikim were in that generation. Who am I? I have my bad midot. I have anger. It's written in the book of Shara Gilgulim. Rabbi Chaim Vital is revealing himself. He's telling, we were in the field, me and my friend, and he told me this and that, and I was angry at him. And I answered him, and I told him this and that, and he was judging himself on his lackings, even that we know that we cannot judge Rabbi Chaim Vital. He was huge, tzaddik, tzaddik. We wish to see his shoes in the world to come. He's footmarks in the world to come, we hope to see. Huge Rabbi Chaim Vital. But still, when he was judging himself, he saw that he's got lackings. He had Midat Akas, he had anger. He was answering to his friend because he was making him sorry. So, he told that to Rabbi Ch to, to the Ariya Kadosh. He told him, how can you say that I'm Tzaddik, that I'm your student? I have lackings, it, they're written, I'm doing Tshuva on them, I confess on them. And look, there is Tzaddikim in this generation that they are huge, they are mountains, they are not sinning at all. How can you pick me from them? So Ariya Kadosh answered to him, you are judging yourself not like Boreh Olam is judging you. And you don't understand the Shita, the way how Boreh Olam is judging you. Boreh Olam, lo he bit aven be Yaakov. He is not looking on your sins at all. He is observing each and every one of us only with one eye of mercy. Chad ena derachame. This is how Borei Olam is judging you. He is seeing only your qualities, only the good things that you have inside of yourselves. Only on that Borei Olam is looking when he is judging you. It's written and it's well known that everyone that is judging by Borei Olam is coming out zakai. He is right, innocent. Borei Olam, this is how he is judging. You're right, you're going to feel disgrace, you're going to feel bad with yourself because of all of the huge mercy of Borah Olam. But actually, Borah Olam is going to say that you're innocent. And this is how Borah Olam is looking at you. So for us, it's very easy to see our friends, to say, all right, it's a bad tshuva. Every time that you see one of your friends that is telling you, listen, I started to keep Shabbat, my wife, she's thinking about maybe going to the mikveh. You are honoring him. You say, wow, amazing. Why are you not saying the same thing about yourself? You also, five years ago, seven, nine, 18 years ago, were in the same genes. You're in the same situation of that person. So why are you not judging yourself like you're judging him? Why are you not mm, cheering yourself up? Why are you not saying good words to yourself that you're keeping Shabbat, that you're doing wonderful things, wonderful mitzvot? Why are you not looking at the bright side of your life? are the good points that you are containing, even though that you have all of your lackings. This is your quality, that even though that you have so many holes in the bottom of your pack, of your uh, bag, still you are containing. A person like you, with the nature of a thief, supposed to lose everything. And you, somehow, Borah Olam is creating a miracle for you that you're going to contain that you're going to keep on davening shachrit, even that you're not doing it in the shtiblach, in a minyan. 
that you keep on coming to the yeshiva, even that you don't feel no taste in it, that you're living in Eretz Israel, even that you don't have your parnasa, you don't have the salary that you used to have thirty thousand dollars a month in the United States, and here you're begging for achieving seven thousand shekels. That it depends. It's maybe two thousand dollars, maybe in the good days, and you're surviving and you're davening to Borlam. So. If you would look in the real eyes, the eyes, and Hashem la tzaddikim, with the eyes of the tzaddikim, you would see that you're an angel, angel, that you are a person that's serving Borolam in a mesirut nefesh, without your desires that you used to run after women, you used to run after success, after glory, after panasa, after your desires. You, this is what you used to do. And now you're not doing all of those things. And if still you have a yetzerara, you have the will to do those things. Even though that you're not doing, you're judging yourself. Why I have that yetzerara? You have it and you're not doing nothing with it. Be happy. Be happy, you have it. You're not gonna break the fact that you have it. This is you. What can we do? No one created, this is how Bura Olam created you to be. This is you, this is Bura Olam. He brought you to this world. One born in Washington, one born in New York, one born like me in Jerusalem, in the most wonderful place of Jerusalem. <laughs> not like a one, but wonderful. And what can we do? This is how Bura Olam created us. So now if you have problems, actually you have problems with Bura Olam. You have problems with him. It's not problems that you have with yourself. What have you done so wrong that you hate yourself so much? You sin, you have a, you had an option with a huge screen 99 and a 29 inch in your living room. You could watch yourself from sinning. How can you do that? How could you? With all of the women going the streets with all of their nonsense and with all of people running after Panasa and after money stories and Cadillacs and BMW and Porsche and I don't know what and everyone running after this and you were a child and what the boy gonna do and he will not sin? How can he stop himself? How could you stop yourself when you when you were five years old, seven years old, to have that desire to swallow the world? How could you stop yourself over there? Your parents couldn't help you, the rabbis couldn't help you, the rabbis of the city that you born in couldn't help you, no one could help you. What could you do? You were innocent. So you are the same innocent now. You are the same person. You are the result of that, that reality. So now, with those lackings, with that leg that you are pulling, with that lame that you are having, serve Hashem Itbarach and see your quality. That with that Yetzirah, you're still here. You're not over there. You're here. You're in Eretz Israel. You're suffering for Hashem Itbarach. You're putting a lot of effort and it eats count. It's count. Borolam is counting every tear. Borolam is counting every sweat. Borolam is counting every time that you're not going to the sea as a mitzvah. Because the person that is doing tshuva, his averot become to be his chuyot. They become to be his privilege. His sins become to be his privilege. Like I said once, a chassid that is keeping Shabbat, he is only making mitzvah aseh of keeping Shabbat. But us, when we're keeping Shabbat, we're also not, not breaking Shabbat. We're making two mitzvot. We have the Yetzirah to do another thing. We have an option. The Hasid, he doesn't have no option. He's keeping Shabbat. What are you going to do now in Shabbat? What are you going to do? There's nothing to do in Shabbat. Go to Bet Knesset. So this is what he's making. He's going to get gain on that. But you are not <coughs> your motorcycle. You're not running on your motorcycle and driving like Harley to the, to the, to the, to the, to the shore. This is you. You're not doing it every Shabbos. When you marry to one woman, it's not that you only marry to one woman. You also not sinning with all of the rest of the options that your Yetzirah I have. This is also your gain. What can we do? This is how Bura Olam gave the Torah. This is the, his decision. He created that reality for us that we're going to have the option of tshuva. And this is the option that we have. And we have to take that option and to run with it. And to thank Hashem Itbach that we have that option of doing tshuva and be happy with our share and continue serving Bura Olam. Because we can never understand what is our mission. We can never understand. There is fire outside. Our mission is not to live our life. Our mission is to save other people. And people are burning outside. People are falling, people are committing suicide, people are drinking, people are using drugs, people are married to goyot and 
women are going with goyim chas v'shalom and horrible, horrible situations for the most of the public of Am Yisrael. And there is unique individuals, people, individual people that are living like they should. Most of Am Yisrael are suffering, even the from from birth, even the Hasidim, even people that are living in Mea Sharim. You don't, you can, we can never imagine how many people are falling from Kedusha. How many young kids are starting to smoke and to use drugs? This is our job. Everyone in his environment, everyone in his neighborhood, everyone with his family, with his relatives, to say another word, another chizuk, another smile, another word, another shiur, if you have an option, another book to make, to give a donation for, to buy books and to give the, those books, to make hafatza. If you can sell those books, wonderful. Give the people the privilege to pay for something that they bought. They're going to buy something of the tzaddik. Rabbeinu said, Rabbi Nachman said, even people, he said, I can help everyone. Everyone that is going after my advice, I can help him except people that are fighting against me. But even if a person doing one favor, just touching one of my people with his small finger, I can save him. And Rabbeinu gonna save. There is a sto story about the Hasidim Reslev in one of the generation, after Rabbeinu passed away, that they were used to make the seuda of Melave Malka. And there was one uh, uh, manager of a bakery, baker, one baker, that in Motzei Shabbat, he was selling those Hasidah Breslev, the leftovers of Friday, in a low price. So it's not a huge mitzvah that he was doing. It was good, but he was making a discount for the Hasidah Breslev in selling them those halot of Friday, those burekasim, cookies, I don't know what, of, of Friday, in a discount for Motzei Shabbat, for making seuda revi'it. After that person passed away, he came to heaven and they told him that he had a horrible, horrible um, punishment in heaven. A lot of avonot, a lot of averot, a lot of mistakes in his life and there is a huge punishment on him. So he said, but wait, I was helping Hasid Breslev. When he said that, they called Rabben. When Rabbi Nachman came, it's written in the book, Mesiyah Sarfei Kodesh. And Rabenu came to that situation, he asked him, what have you done? He told him, I was making a discount to your student, to your Hasidim, when they were making Mila Malka. And because of that, Rabenu saved that person and took him out from all of that verdict, from all of that judgment, horrible judgment, horrible condition that he had. And everyone have his mitzvot. Everyone can do something good. I remember that I read once about a person that one time he went in the cemetery and he saw a, 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 a tomb, a matzeva, a grave, without um, a matzeva, without cover on, on it. And he asked people over there, what is the story? So they said that it's a person that, that the family didn't have enough money to pay for that. So that person felt very bad with it in his heart because of, of what he saw. And he may, went and collect money from a lot of friends and people and he bought that matzeva, that cover for, for that person's grave. And after that, he created, so to speak, a hobby. A hobby to do good things for graves, for matzevot. And every week he had one day that he was going to the, and he was washing graves, he was cleaning, he was fixing. And one time he saw also uh, uh, two matzevot, two graves of two um, uh, twins, girl, twi gr girl twins. And, and he done something for them because they, were, they didn't do Kaddish or they didn't do the matzeva right or something like that. He done for them. After a while that person died a clinical death like it called but he died and in court they told him that he had to 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 stay over there and to pay for all of his avonot and after the 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 Muslim, the scale were saying that he is um, chayav guilty. guilty so he didn't know what to do he didn't know had no answer nothing he was too afraid to say something and then those two uh, girls twins came and they said, but please, I, we have something to say. After all verdict, after the decision, after everything, they came and they said, but please, he helped us, he satisfied us, he done something good for us. 
and then after them another person came and another person with his cover and another one that he said Kaddish on him and another one that he said a minion to say Kaddish on, on, the, on the, his yard site and everyone with his story, all of that list of people came and, and said their, their svarah, the, that he made a mitzvah with them and everyone was climbing on the scale and until he became to be innocent until he become to be Zakai. And that person woke up from his death. When he remembering everything from, from that from that court. And he done Chuvash Lema. He was Chiloni. Everyone have the mitzvot surrounding you. He found his mitzvah in the Bet Almin, in the cemetery. You maybe you're more lucky than him, you can find your mitzvah in the shul. You don't need to go to the cemetery to find your mitzvah. Everyone with his reality, you can smile to a person, you can make a phone call to a person, you can go visit people in hospitals, you can, I don't know what, you can give an advice to people in the phone late at night, you can do whatever you like, you can make a gmach, you can do things. But on top of all of those things, Borolam is saying to Avraham Avinu, Vayamen bi vechashva lo litzdaka. If you believe in Hashem Itbarach, it's become to be charity. It's the highest mitzvah of them all. To believe in Borei Olam, it's higher mitzvah than all. I asked once, it's late, I asked once Rav Shalom, I told him, if, Rav please, if I believe in a certain mitzvah, but I'm not making it, I don't have the power to make that mitzvah. But I believe that it's right, that it is a mitzvah. Do I'm go am I going to get gain on that mitzvah, that just on my faith or not? He said the gain that you're going to get on believing in that mitzvah, it's even bigger than the gain that you're going to get if you would make that mitzvah. The gain of faith, it's bigger than the gain of the mitzvah itself. There is, if you believe and also making, you're going to get twice on the faith and on the action. But even if you're not making the action on the fact that you believe in Borei Olam, that you're saying to yourself that those mitzvot are right and that you want to make them, only that you're going to get gain on the faith of all of those mitzvot. Thank you very much.